getting an indication that microphones may be necessary. I think, yeah, mine's hidden. It would seem. All righty. Now you can push it to go. turn it on. First you when you're already late. You've got to make an entrance, make an entrance. Hadn't lost it so. So. So my first announcement, uh, Mr. Chair, is to welcome our new commissioner, Mr. Roy Andrews, uh, to the Planning Commission. And uh, I'd like to express thanks to uh, uh, our planner, uh, Jason Lyon, for filling in uh, for me during my absence last month. Um, so uh, staff received uh, three filed plats uh, that had previously been reviewed by the Planning Commission being Holstead Commercial, uh, Lot 820RR uh, in Country Club of Arkansas replat and lot one of Lewis Nelson addition. Uh, staff also reviewed the uh, following minor plats being lot 114R block two Majestic Point addition, which was a merger of two residential lots and Diamond Park commercial replat, which was a merger of two commercial lots into one. Uh, the purpose there, uh, nothing changed on the, um, on the development, mainly the, uh, uh, they found that they had issues with utility uh, between the uh, the actual gas station and the car wash, so they just needed to remove the lot line and merge the two um, to make it move. So, um, otherwise, um, the um, the active preliminary developments uh, currently phase 19 of Country Club of Arkansas, uh, the senior living facility. Uh, we met with representatives from them, and they are prepping for final approval and submission of the final plat, uh, development plan and landscape plan, and they're moving to building plans review. So we're expected, uh, they're expecting or, or wanting to get construction started by May of this year. So that's exciting to hear. And then phase 24B of CCA and Cypress Bend of, uh, at White Oak Crossing are continuing progress on preliminary construction activity. And that concludes my announcements. Thank you, Mr. Grummer. We will now move on to approval of the minutes. Everyone's been provided a copy of the minutes in your packet. Do we have any comments or corrections to be made? Mr. Chairman, I make the motion.
Sunday services, but you stayed in here that you got other meetings. Are they going to be during the week? Are they going to be in the evening, days? What, what there, there are a couple of other uh, groups that the church sponsors. Um, they are not every week, and none of them are meeting right now. We have a group called the Caregiver's Corner, which is a support group for uh, people who are caregivers for loved ones like with Alzheimer's or whatever. Um, usually 8, 10, maybe 11 people come to that. Um, that's once a month. And then there has been an AA group. They're, again, small, less than 10 people that meets, uh, I think they, I just arrived in November and they, of course, had not been meeting during COVID, but I think that's a weekly meeting. Steve, can you? I think that's right. Yeah, that's a weekly meeting, but they're both very small groups. I, I had more, more along the lines of what hours are we talking about? Are uh, the about Caregiver's TV? Corner meets during the day okay. around um, 1230, from 1230 to two once a month on the first Wednesday of the month. There are again seven, eight, nine people typically at most. The AA group also less than ten people. I believe they're evening. Okay. I think they, they were meeting at six thirty, something like that for an hour. Yeah, that would be after everybody else would be gone. Right. Yeah. Okay. That that answers my question. Thank you. Any Thank further you. any further questions of the applicant? Motion. I'll make a motion. We approve uh, the uh, conditional use permit for 2001 Club Manor Drive for St. Nicholas Episcopal Church. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Those in favor, yes. 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 Those opposed, no. All right. Motion carries. We will now move on to item number two, the request to amend the Maumelle Master Land Use Plan for property located along Commercial Park Drive from commercial to special use residential. Mr. Grummer, staff report. All right. Um, well, let's see here. Okay, uh, so this item was placed on the January agenda, uh, but removed due to the failure of the applicant to meet all notification requirements. All requirements have been uh, met at this time. Um, this is a request to amend the master uh, land use plan for property located at Commercial Park Drive from commercial to special use residential and a, a zoning change uh, from uh, C3 to PRD, Planned Residential Development. This, uh, the first request uh, for rezoning for this specific tract of land, I'm sorry, this is the first request for rezoning for this tract of land along Commercial Park Drive, although requests for surrounding tracts were made uh, 20 years ago in 2001. Uh, the Planning Commission and City Council approved a rezone from C3 uh, to C2 to the north of the subject property which had proposed a senior living facility uh, with that request, but developed out as multifamily apartments instead, which uh, C2 zoning allows R3 residential by right. R3 residential allows multifamily mid-rise and high-rise structures not to exceed 35 units per gross acre and special multifamily residential structures declared in the site plan review process to be a retirement center or housing for the elderly. Now I share this because what is being proposed with this request would not be compatible in a C2 zone due to the single family detached type home uh, being proposed uh, for the elderly. Um, staff also found back in 2001, an ordinance uh, 395, which was approved later that year, but was uh, never codifi codified. Uh, this ordinance amended section 94 to allow C2 town center uses in a C3 commercial area, but not allow the R3 residential component, which is allowed by right in C2. This effectively expanded the type of commercial uses allowed in this area. Now the applicant proposes a rezone 
from C3 commercial service to PRD, planned residential development, to allow the development of single family detached and multifamily attached units for a senior living community. Currently, the only residential uses allowed by code in a commercial land use area is R3 residential. So in order to accommodate the R1 and R2 residential types proposed, a land use change to SUR special residential would be needed. Staff reviewed the compatibility of special use residential in this area, and the commissioners were provided a zoning and land use analysis, which pointed out that the request is inconsistent with the Maumel Ford. The, the municipal plan shows this area as a commercial area that is consistent with areas next to the industrial complex to the north and east, and um, sorry, I lost my spot. Acting as a buffer to the residential to the south and west, there is an existing storage facility to the um, to the south, which does not allow residential uses. A rezone to PRD would effectively place. Uh, I'm sorry, since C3 does not allow residential uses. A rezone to PRD would effectively place residential uses in the center of a C3 zoned area, risking heavier commercial use next to single family owner occupied residential owners. Some examples of C3 uses are car lots, farm implement sales and service, uh, marine supply and equipment sales, and, and warehouses. Now, of course, uh, from a planning perspective, it's hard to imagine some of those uses in that specific area. Um, now, based on the proposed use of R1 and R2 type housing for the subject property, staff is concerned this could be seen as spot zoning, but staff does recognize that there is a high demand for different housing types located closer to the town center area, as seen in the commercial, as seen in the Carnahan Village development north of Club Manor. Now, also, this area has not seen any commercial development other than the repurpose of the old Kroger into a storage facility and then a bank close by. The move of Kroger from this location to the town center had lasting impacts on the markability uh, of this area to support C3 type development. Also C3 typically requires higher traffic counts to support the development, but this area has low to no visibility uh, to Highway 100 impacting it again its marketability. So staff agrees that a reevaluation of the land use and zoning is warranted for the entire commercial park area to bring it more in line with current market trends and better promote development of this space that is in harmony with adjacent land uses and the municipal plan. But this needs to be done in a more comprehensive approach taking into account impacts to adjacent industrial and commercial land uses. The applicant has indicated that they are willing to work with the city to do this uh, but has stated they wish to move forward with the current request. Uh, no comments were received from the public notifications on this. And I'll keep in mind as well that um, we did place a sign right in front of the, uh, the, the entrance of the apartment complex to the north, and we did not receive one request, whereas when you place a sign in a single family residential neighborhood, you tend to get a lot of requests. So the difference within the type of residential can uh, show the, the responses that you get, as well as the impact on future residential. So in clarifying the actions on this tonight, uh, the Planning Commission can recommend a do pass or a do not pass recommendation to City Council. If the Planning Commission does recommend approval of the proposal, uh, the proponent may appeal to the City Council, which shall review the action and may approve the proposal by not less than three-fourths vote of all the members. Uh, lastly, uh, the, la the land use plan section of the city ordinance provides guidelines to you for basing the decision, which include other changes that have occurred in the neighborhood since the land use plan was adopted or the latest amendment was enacted, uh, whether these changes resulted in a change to the neighborhood's character sufficiently to justify the proposed land use plan change, issues and concerns raised by the neighborhood when supported when submitted with sufficient specificity to enable the commission or city council to respond to the issues and other substantial or technical evidence that any proponent or opponent of the pro proposed change submits. So I'll be happy
to answer any questions or concerns concerning those guidelines, if you like. Um, staff recommends a do not pass recommendation to city council to amend the Maumel Master land use plan from commercial to special use residential for the subject property. And that concludes my comments. I have public comment cards from uh, Mr. Harris and Mr. Pfeiffer, and as I understand, you're both re here representing the same interests. Uh, I guess, Mr. Harris, you've uh, determined to go first, so uh, <coughs> may I address if, the council, please uh, name and address. Yes, uh, Ron Harris, uh, 6309 uh, Southland Drive, north of the Rock, Arkansas. Uh, 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 I, uh, on some other meetings, it, it, it come to find out that I don't live in uh, Maumelle, but I want y'all to know that I shop in Maumelle, and I <laughs> shop for Kroger, and so I, I spend money in Maumelle, just so y'all know. So uh, uh, on a lighter side, uh, uh, Mr. Grummer in his detailed report uh, is doing no well as far as doing his job. Um, let, me, uh, let me take you down a path, and it's, uh, I'm, I'll, I'll get there quick, okay? It's the old... Uh, you know, strike three. So I am here. Uh, strike one was uh, the property behind the Cheers restaurant. Okay, Higginbotham had that. And here's where I'm going with this. Uh, my father and mother lived in Russellville, Arkansas, and all the children, nobody lived there. And they didn't take their pills on time, and they went from owning their own home to all of a sudden $6,000 a month in the independent living. And, and why did this happen? It's because of uh, the health care. And, and so uh, early on, I, this property came up behind Cheers, and that's where I got this idea as a home builder, you know, still building houses. You build a house out here in the suburb and just hope somebody comes along and buys it. You know, why not market to seniors? And uh, so we started that property there and, and, and looking at it and, and had a, several PowerPoint presentations, uh, gave it to many seniors here in Maumel. And um, uh, for whatever reason, the, it, it just didn't work. And, and the financing wasn't there. I think it's close to 2007, 2008, something like that. And, and so it just didn't turn out. And so somebody else bought it and put those uh, multifamily or those apartments there. And, and uh, so that, that's what that. So uh, then strike two. Here comes this uh, six acres. Uh, Mr. Holloway uh, said, you know, hey, or the mayor. I think it was the mayor, uh, Watson, at the time. So, hey, I got this six acres next to this uh, lake uh, where the new fire station is. And I thought, man, that's great, because my whole concept of this PowerPoint was, you know, hey, you know, walk to your grocery store, walk to, you know, and drive your golf cart or, or, and, and such. So, so here we are with, and, and then the mayor said, well, no, we need a new fire station. So, uh, so after doing that development. So here we come, and, and what I presented to you is a proposed news release this is strike three, and I think we've got us a hit. Uh, so uh, uh, you all know the property. Uh, every time I go to Kroger, not every time, but I can't tell you how many seniors th that I've that been shopping with see me and, Ron, I, boy, I sure wish that development had a, taken off cause, uh, because we're talking about single-family ownership of seniors owning these homes, where the home is you know, owned by the family trust, and then after they move out, here comes somebody else. And, and it's just a perfect little idea and nice energy efficient home. So anyway, that's uh, all I wanted to say. And y'all got the presentation. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Mr. Pryford, do you still wish to address the commission? Please state your name and address for the record, please. Gene Pfeiffer, 16300 Cantrell, Little Rock, Arkansas. I've been to Maumel meetings many, many times over the last 30 years. It was the first time in these new quarters, and let me congratulate you on beautiful new quarters. I first attended a planning commission meeting in 1965, which I imagine is before most of you were born. Uh, I've been to a bunch of them. I'm the developer of North Shore Business Park, Overlook Park, and Little Rock Overlook and Lock and Dam Number no. Seven, uh, Cheneau, 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 Cheneau Court on Highway 10, a uh, mostly seniors patio home development, and many others over the years. I know a little bit about development, and I'm proud of my record of not being associated with anything 
that is shoddy or less than the very best, and that's what we have planned for here. I bought this land in 1990 when the Kroger store was the only retail establishment in Maumelle, and the outstanding goal of the city and the Chamber of Commerce and everybody that lived here was for more retail, more retail. That's what Maumelle wanted. And here was this property surrounding the only retail, and it was zoned properly, and I had the hopes of providing that additional retail for the city that was demanding all of this. Um, through no fault of yours or the city's, uh, my anchor moved down the street, and the truest statement that you made in your report, sir, was when you said uh, the Kroger store's relocation eliminated the call for more retail in this area. All the development that is there, the bank, the mini storage, the apartment houses, everything predated the Kroger store moving. So I have had to lower my sights for what I can do with that property. And just for a matter of history, in, uh, in 1994, this city wanted to place a new library in town. And they privileged me by asking if a very fine architectural firm, Fennell Purifoy, could, could study my land for the library at no cost to me. Well, of course, I said, sure, go ahead. They came up with a study that not only showed the library, but a new city hall and a new city auditorium, a wonderful program that, if done, would have enhanced the value of my property and perhaps brought on more retail. And I agreed to donate. 2.95 acres to the city for the library. It's my understanding that the city council at the time was primed to vote unanimously to accept my offer when Bobby Roberts of Central Arkansas Library appeared out of the blue at the meeting and said that if my site was selected, he would not put the library in Maumelle. And the city council, having previously decided to accept my offer, turned it down. Uh, Ten years goes by, and in 2014... Mr. Crawford, that is the expiration of your three minutes, but as the applicant, uh, you will you know, be afforded some further engagement with the, with the commission. Thank you. I'll try to keep it short. All right. I thought you should know this history. In 2014, we did a study for a new city hall for Maumel, and again, I offered the city 4.2 acres for the city hall and 1.3 acres for a park, again, thinking that if accepted, that would be an incentive for the additional development. Uh, in essence, my hands have been tied, and you frankly did not help when you allowed a Kroger store, a, a perfectly suitable building for additional retail, to be downzoned for what it is now being used. You didn't do me or the city a favor when you allowed that one of the major corners in this town to become a parking lot for a U-Haul center and long-term storage of RVs. And when they came back and asked for permission to expand that use and you didn't do anything to enhance the screening being offered of that unsuitable use, you didn't do yourselves or me a favor either. So I'm here to plead with you. In all of the planning commission meetings I've ever been to, I have never heard the suggestion that a residential development has any negative impacts on surrounding industrial uses. It's always been the opposite. That is a unique position I have ever heard espoused by a planning director. Um, what we have here is detached, single-family, market-rate, residences for sedate seniors, that is probably the least impactful, the most desirable type of development that any community could ask for. It's incredible to me that it's being questioned as not being an appropriate use. When, when acreage is anywhere in this state is annexed into a city, it automatically comes in as detached single family residential and it has to be upgraded from that to remove that privilege. That is the automatic privilege upon 
being annexed into a city. I cannot imagine the basis for not approving this project. And if you do, I would like to hear from each of you, based on the history of my ownership of this property, what in the world you would like me to do with it, because I've tried everything else. Thank you. Any commissioners have any questions of the applicant or staff? I have a question about special use. What does that mean exactly? Special use residential. So uh, <clears throat> in the special use residential, it allows for um, uses of, uh, that around areas that may have uh, geographic issues or uh, do not conform to the standard. Uh, they need some sort of uh, unique uh, development criteria. Uh, the special use residential uh, allows for 96% uh, residential uh, with 4% commercial. It's a very small amount of commercial, but um, and within that land use type, uh, you're able to utilize um, the full extent of residential types from R1, single family detached, all the way up to R3, which is considered uh, mid-rise and high-rise uh, with a, a maximum of 35 units per acre. So it, it allows you the ability to, uh, to uh, place different types, but also tied with the PRD allows um, greater oversight and approval process through the Planning Commission and City Council um, with the uh, requirement of a development plan to go along with the plat. Further questions or comments from the commission? Yeah, I'd like to follow up on something, Scott, that you said earlier uh, in this, is that I think I heard you say that you believe that this piece of property and surrounding property needs further study for long term. Am, am I on the uh, right page with what you were hinting at? So, um, so yes, that is correct, uh, which... Uh, I totally agree with uh, Mr. Pfeiffer's comments, um, and I'm not necessarily opposed to uh, the project itself. Um, the, the problem is the initial, um, in our initial review and analysis of the area, over the years we've allowed some rezoning uh, on this side of the boulevard, um, which has uh, kind of crept into the industrial uh, part, including the, the schools that were put there. Uh, the main issue um, on this one is that um, C3, as our code indicates, does not allow any residential whatsoever. Um, by switching this to a residential use surrounded by C3, and you're effectively putting residential in the center of C3, which kind of goes against uh, the, the, the C3 component. Um, but with that being said, um, uh, so we would like to see kind of an analysis of the impacts to the industrial park, uh, the impacts to future uh, development uh, adjacent to it, as well as what's the appropriate uh, rezoning if that's going to happen um, to, uh, so just a, additional review needs on my side. Not putting words in your mouth, the <clears throat> property to the east, which is zoned industrial, if that had a different zoning to it, would we be not, not in, in a different direction? Not necessarily. So the, the industrial, which is uh, located to the east of the property, um, the uses there are more of a, uh, they fit more t into the criteria of a uh, C3 type. So it's not as heavy. Now there is some uh, vacant parcels over there, so it's unknown how those are going to develop out. So it could, uh, there could be some heavy use, but um, Again, I think it's more of trying to help Mr. Pfeiffer achieve what he needs for the area so that he can actually promote and sell the property, including I'm not opposed to residential uses over there. It's just a matter of getting uh, the zoning and the land use uh, to work in, uh, accordingly so that we don't uh, place a zone there that's going to uh, conflict with uh, the neighboring zones. Can you go back to this page? Yes, sir, I can. I'd like to add something if I could. Please, go ahead. Um, 
I found some examples. Name and address, please. Uh, Jess Griffin, Holloway, 200 Casey Drive, Mama, Arkansas. Thank you. Um, one example of C3 to R2 would be David's Burgers uh, to Country Club of Arkansas. Another uh, dissimilar use is Natural Trail Estates, PRD, surrounded by CR C4. And then there's Carnahan Village, that's an infill also. And, and one of the points he said is one reason of permitting this is what changed. A huge change to this would be the fact that Carnahan Drive does not go to the freeway, and it was on the master plan to be a connection to the freeway, and the EPA stopped it. And when we knew that didn't happen, and when it got taken off the master plan, the only, there's a huge residential loop. And so all the commercial is right at Odom, right there at Kroger, and every bit of the residential traffic basically will bypass this center area. If there's not a middle thoroughfare there, well, then there's no real additional traffic. And so that was a big impact of why these also didn't get developed is because if that street went to the freeway, well, then that would have been the Wide Oak Crossing. Now you got Wide Oak Crossing. I mean, why would they come here when they got a connection right there on the freeway? And so every commercial is going to be wanting to go there. Um, there's another street. I can't think of the name of it, but it's... Uh, <clears throat> kind of the mini circle between Odom and, and it doesn't have a future connection yet either. I think uh, Tommy Wright owns that piece of property. And so if that had a connection, there'd be another way to get, some way to get the residential traffic through the heart of the city and not going around Odom to where they would never come through. If Carnahan went through, I really think it would have changed the whole area right there and that development and all that raw land and all that wooded area would have been developed. There's another, like a six eight tracker track between the cleaners and the bank, and it hadn't developed either. And that mainly because the Kroger moved and Carnahan never went through to the freeway. That's all I needed to say. Thank you. I've got a question on this. So technically, if he does the change, the zoning change, it's not special use residential to industrial, special use residential to C3, then industrial. Because we're not, this across the street still stays C3. Correct. Okay. So there is a buffer. Well, there's a buffer of C3 from the industrial. Well, there's a right. buffer, buffer from the special use to C3 to industrial. We're not going straight correct. residential to industrial. No, you're, you are correct there. And, and again, it's not necessarily the industrial component that I'd mentioned that I'm concerned about. It's just the, uh, it's the incompatibility with our current zoning code uh, with between C3 and residential. Now, if that switched to C2, then uh, it could uh, provide other uh, options because C2 does allow for residential. And so I'm just, it's more about having the, the right uh, transect uh, in there. And then uh, also just to address uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Griffin's uh, comments, uh, which I agree, there are other areas that are zoned C3 and surrounded by other uses, but the, such as the one uh, over by David's Burgers, that is C3, but that's surrounded by PRD. Uh, so here you're talking about a PRD being surrounded by C3. So it's kind of a different situation. Um, and then uh, Carnahan Village, of course, uh, that was a low, uh, that was a transition from um, from PCD to a PRD, allowing for low density single family detached. But again, uh, that single family detached is adjacent to both PCD and uh, to um, uh, residential. So, so again, there's re other residential around it, and the and the PCD component is a lighter commercial. It's not a heavier commercial. Go ahead, Mr. Fuffer. There are other buffers besides just use, such as topography. Mm -hmm. And if you look at this map, the eastern boundary of that red, where it adjoins the gray, is a high ridge. And that is an additional buffer between this property and the industrial to the east. Thank you for the 
additional comment. Uh, and, and again, and I'm sorry, uh, that, that is correct. Uh, there is a geographic uh, hillside that does create a natural buffer. But again, I'm, my concern is more about the C3 commercial component. If you go down, there's two other senior facilities, the Methodist one and Elmcroft, at each intersection past this. And this isn't like, yeah, it is senior, it is single family, but it's, it's a senior facility with medical care. It's more, a high, it's, it's different than just, oh, this is a neighborhood subdivision and that's what it is. No, these are seniors that need to be by the post office. They need to be by the revenue office. They need to be by the grocery store. They need to be in the heart of town. They can take their golf cart and drive to the golf course. That This is an area that would be perfect for this use. And when we come back with the PRD, y'all have the control to say, no, we don't like that. You, want, you need more buffer here. You need this buffer here. We hadn't gotten to that point. But we're the one accepting the, the hurt because we're saying, yeah, we see every property that's developed around it. The only property that's not is owned by Mr. Pfeiffer, Pfeiffer that's C3. And so he knows what's going to happen. And so we're the ones saying, we'll put this development, and we don't care that the C3 is there. And they don't care that we're there. We're only going to support all the businesses that are going to surround that area. So all the commercial businesses there will now have more support and more clients. Thank you. Any further questions or comments from the commission? Does anyone have a motion? Keep in mind a motion for a recommendation must be in the affirmative. I'd almost be willing to make a motion to table this. Going along with what Scott had said earlier about further discussion of this whole area and the whole development, come back with a better plan uh, as to what our future is going to be with this. Um, I know Gene's on this for a long, long time, and, and it's not that I'm opposed to what they're proposing here. There's a couple things I don't like, but uh, that's a, another issue that would come before us. Um, Would that be appropriate to <clears throat> potentially would be appropriate but in I guess in discussion on your theoretical motion what more would you like to see Commissioner Fisher before you were more comfortable voting on this well it's more along what Scott was saying a what is the plan for the entire area that would make it more compatible so um, and one of the things that we've discussed internally is we're going to be looking at this year to um, we're beyond our five-year requirement uh, for a review of our land use uh, plan for the city. Right. So we're going to be looking at that on a holistic approach to the city. Um, so this will certainly play a role in that and probably be the seed of that to, to uh, review it. But um, in, my, in my opinion, I, I agree that when you look at the... Uh, uh, the area and the city, we're in need of, of, uh, of a diversity of housing types. So I do not disagree one bit with the development type, nor do I disagree with uh, something of this nature in the area. Uh, the possibility of uh, getting rid of that C3 component, which has not worked for the area for the last 20 years, and converting that to a C2 that would be more, uh, uh, more appropriate to the town center type I'd have a lower um, commercial. Um, it would meet the needs of that. It also would add in the ability to have additional uh, residential, um, higher density residential at that. But if that higher density residential is put on the uh, east side of Commercial Park Drive, then that could create a buffer that could help um, solve some of the, just the, the issues 
between the industrial use and the residential. But again, like I said, we're talking about um, uh, encroachment into our industrial park area, and those are other things that we certainly want to look at. Mr. Fisher, toward your your potential motion here, I mean, I think certainly I'm just one voice and one vote, but I think you know, looking at the potential impacts to I guess the surrounding property, the industrial, I tend to agree with Mr. Fiker's comment that you know what negative effect on C3 commercial or industrial is a residential development going to happen? And what impact could be worse than all of this property just sitting idle for 30 years? I mean, I, th I don't see this having a negative impact. And then as to, you know, Mr. Grummer's comments about possibly, you know, converting this whole area, I think all of us might agree it's long overdue. And maybe converting this to C2, which would allow residential, I, that, may, that sounds good in theory, but I think that's a bit of putting form over substance, which would more or less allow this anyway. So, and I'm one that I prefer to progress uh, the city in its development and, uh, and moving property that's been setting derelict and, and idle for, for many years. Uh, your vote tonight, whether if it's on the affirmative or the negative, uh, it would still uh, move on to the city council and allow uh, for a discussion there. The city council can uh, request that that be sent back to planning commission for further review if needed. So just, just FY, other, there's things in which you can look at, um, but either way, um, I see and, and I, I sympathize with Mr. Pfeiffer's situation, and uh, uh, so. Well, I think I may have mentioned of tabling this, which was not what I really meant. <laughs> what I was talking about was further discussion along this line and, and how we get from point A to point B, uh, and I know they want an answer because uh, this has been what, three months now? 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Point taken. 31. I understand, Gene. I'm 83 years old. <laughs> I'm, talking, I'm, I'm talking about Mr. Harrison's proposal to us tonight. Uh, Further questions or discussion from the commission? Okay, well, so are the, are you just purchasing up to Commerce Drive, even though Gene he owns the other side? Right. You talking about the two acres on the other side? Yeah. Yeah, we don't. We don't know about that yet. I mean, that might be a pocket neighborhood or something. I don't know. We just, I don't know. We're, we're just, we're not, we're, we're going to do the retirement thing first. And so, and then we're also looking at uh, this other area across from um, it too, as, as Scott made it aware that we might get some more density there too. So we might use that. So anyway, we, so we're, we're, we're looking, we're, we're trying to do this first. And another 30 seconds. Uh, Mr. Parker? Thank you. I, f I forgot about one other aspect of my generosity to the city. There, there is a one-acre tract on the east side of the road in that pink area that I deeded to the city as a gift, and the city uh, had thought about using it in various ways. I imagine that the city uses would need the C3 and couldn't use the C2. So that's something else to think about while you're thinking about uh, asking me to rezone some other part of my property to get this ideal prospect through. You're suggesting that the city would have to rezone some of its as well, uh, which might not be uh, something the city would want to do. And uh, the Maybe what I ought to do is deed all of that pink land to someone else and then come back next year with just this where we can't be confused about what else I own everywhere else in town. I mean, I, I, I plead with you, 14 acres is not spot zoning. Spot zoning, it, I've, I've never heard of spot zoning being applied to a 13-acre tract. Can we just focus on this piece of property, please, and this wonderful project that... The Holloway firm has 
has done all this planning on and either voted up or voted down is something that it's inconceivable to me that this is something that the city would consider turning its nose up. I just, I mean, detached, single family market rate for elderly people. What in the world is negatively impactful about that? Ask yourselves, please. The one thing I would want to say is that, that I don't want to do, and maybe this is a little bit about what you're saying, is if we let residential in here, are we impacting our industrial, that when an industrial applicant comes in, then we run into the issue of not in my backyard, and all those people speak out because they're trying to put a use right next, which was zoned today, but they're trying to put a use in there that's next to residential, and now they got a lot of opposition that they normally wouldn't have. Do we run into that? So um, that's some of the comments from uh, our uh, director of community and economic development is that uh, past responses from uh, some industry that have looked at Maumelle uh, to locate here has been the encroachment of some of the uh, lighter commercial uh, over into the area. Um, in my opinion, I think uh, housing and um, housing affordability is a key component for housing workforce that could be supported in the industrial area. Um, but the, again, and I alluded to it earlier, it's the type of housing. Uh, we got not one single comment out of the multi-family housing, mm -hmm. but, if, but when you get single family, owner occupied, uh, they become more entitled to their property and you get more outspoken. So that's the encroachment part. It's not, there, there's a lot of key components in there. Okay. Further questions or comments from the commission? Does anyone have a motion? I'm going to make a motion for a due pass recommendation to the Maumelle City Council to amend the Maumelle Master Land Use Plan for this, for this property located along Commerce Park Drive from commercial to special use residential. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Those in favor, yes. 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 Those opposed, no. We will issue a due pass recommendation. Moving on to the next item on our agenda. It's a request to amend the Maumelle Mill Master Zoning Map for this same parcel property. Mr. Grummer, any further uh, staff report? Um, the same comments uh, from the last uh, apply. Uh, staff recommends a do not pass uh, recommendation to uh, City Council. Any commissioners have any further questions of staff or the applicant or further comments? I'll yeah. make a motion. I do pass uh, to the City Council to amend the ma uh, Maumelle Master Zoning Map for the property along Commercial Park Drive from C3 to PRD. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Those in favor, yes. 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 Those opposed, no. We wish you a due pass recommendation. Right, I will now close the public hearing and we'll move on to liaison reports. Uh, February 1st was Commissioner Johnson. Uh, Commissioner Johnson is not here, so we will refer to the uh, minutes and the video posted on the city website. Uh, moving on to February 16th, uh, Commissioner Green. Okay. <clears throat> that, that meeting was actually the 22nd. Okay. Well, how about the meeting on the 22nd? Yep. Um, the third reading uh, of orders 1021 which talks about reducing the number of cop copies required for plant submission. Uh, that was passed. Then the rest of them was uh, second reading, which um, uh, for 1022, 
uh, and the new business is first reading for orders 1023 from Mount Mommy uh, Land Use Plan. Uh, this one brought on quite a bit of discussion. Uh, it was pretty, pretty lengthy. As a matter of fact, I left before it was over with. <laughs> <laughs> Because they was on and on and on, man. So, <clears throat> anyway, it's the stuff over there at uh, the country club. <clears throat> so, um, that's pretty much it. Then some resolution uh, on the Pulaski County Hazardous Mitigation Plan and Civil Service uh, Terminal. So, if you want to see a lengthy meeting, man, go back to the <laughs> website and... Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner Green. Uh, liaison assignments for next month, March 1st. Commissioner Smith, that's yours. And March 15th is Commissioner Fisher. Does anyone have anything further? Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion and a second. All those in favor, yes? Yes. 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 As opposed, no. We are adjourned. <laughs>